my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. So we continue to look at the life of the Prophet والسلام, and we're looking at the lives of those around him, uh, including his companions, family members, even some of the opponents and enemies. If you remember, uh, we just talked about the the ban that the Muslims were suffering from, a ban that lasted for quite some time. And after that ban was lifted, we would expect some relief. But the prophets, messengers, they are tested and they are tried, and their trials and tests tend to be one after the other. And so in the 10th year after the mission of Islam, shortly after that ban was lifted, the Prophet ﷺ would face another great, a great trial. It would be a tragedy. At nearly 50 years old, the Prophet ﷺ, after almost 25 years of marriage, his wife Khadija, the mother of the believers, the mother of his children, radiallahu anha, she passed away. And, of course, death in and of itself is a hardship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes saying, فَأَصَابَتْكُمْ مُصِيبَةُ الْمَوْتِ The disaster of death, it should strike you. Death in and of itself can be a great hardship, but when it's the death of a God-fearing loved one, it can be even worse. Especially when that loved one was a great woman like Khadija. Really, it's hard to compare but someone that is striving or attempting to be of such a caliber. While many of us are familiar with Khadija radiallahu anha, we're familiar with her role in the life of the Prophet والسلام, to some degree, what she meant to him والسلام, is best captured in his own words. It was reported on Aisha radiallahu anha, قالت كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا ذكر خديجة أثنى عليها فأحسن الثناء. عائشة, the wife of the Prophet والسلام, mother of the believers, who was also noted, this was during her time with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, when the companions asked who he loved the most, he said he loved عائشة. The companions, they... They were saying, no, what about us? You're talking about your companions. And he said, I love her father the most. That was during her time. But even during her time as being his wife, she said that the Prophet, والسلام, he would remember her often. And whenever he remembered her, he would praise her in the best of ways. She said, فَغِرْتُ يَوْمًا One day I became jealous of this. And I, he, she said, فَقُلْتُ مَا أَكْثَرَ مَا تَذْكُرُهَا حَمْرَاءَ الشِّدْقِ قَدْ أَبْدَلَكَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ بِهَا خَيْرًا مِنْهَا And so out of her jealous rage or fit, if you will, she said that one day I became jealous and I said, how often are you going to mention her? This red jawboned woman, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mighty and majestic, has given you someone better. Red jawboned here, it, it's a, it's a, it's, what it means is this older, this elderly woman, you know, like when the teeth fall out, that's no longer white, it's just the red of the gums. And this is what she said regarding Khadija. She says, Allah has given you better, and what she meant was herself. You know, he loved her the most during her time. But in context of his life, the Prophet ﷺ responded and essentially put her in her proper place. And he said, والسلام, ما أبدلني الله عز وجل خيرا منها. He says, Allah hasn't replaced her with better. آمنت بي إذ كفر بي الناس وصدقتني إذ كذبني الناس وواساتني بمالها إذ حرمني الناس 
ورزقني الله عز وجل ولدها إذ حرمني أولاد النساء says that she validated me when others disbelieved. She supported me with her wealth when others refused me. She believed in me when others denied me. And Allah enriched me with her offspring when the other women deprived me of children. It's reported by Imam Ahmed. So now you can understand why she would become jealous. It's a natural reaction to such things. Aisha radiallahu anha, she also said, radiallahu anha, she also says, ma ghirtu ala ahadin min nisa'i nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma ghirtu ala Khadija. She said, I was not jealous of any woman, meaning the wives of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, like I was of Khadija, wa ma ra'aytuha, and I never saw her. They weren't co-wives, you see. Khadija passed away before the Prophet ﷺ married Aisha. It was like three years in between the two. They did not live together with the Prophet ﷺ, but at the same time, she was more jealous of Khadija than any other of his wives. She says, وَلَكِنْ كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يُكْثِرُ ذِكْرَهَا وَرُبَّمَا ذَبَحَ شَاتَ يقطعها أعضاء ثم يبعثها في صدائق خديجة. says that he would regularly when he would slaughter a sheep, he would process it, cut it up into pieces, and he would send those pieces out to her friends. Some reports say he would send those pieces out, uh, those pieces of meat out to her family. عليه الصلاة والسلام. She says, so maybe I, I said, كَأَنَّهُ لَمْ يَكُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا مْرَأَةٌ إِلَّا خَدِيجَةٌ it's, it's almost as if there's no woman in this world except for her. This is what she said, Aisha, to the Prophet ﷺ. The way that he would remember her, the way that he would praise her, how he would dote over her family and friends after she had passed away. It's as if there's no other woman. I mean, what am I in comparison to her? The Prophet ﷺ would go, إِنَّهَا كَانَتْ وَكَانَتْ وَكَانَ لِي مِنْهَا وَلَتْ He would carry on. She was this and she was that. She was so much and she gave me children. Supported by Imam al-Bukhari. She was one of the best women of the world. And rightfully so among the most virtuous women of paradise. The Prophet ﷺ is reported by his companion Ibn Abbas said that the Prophet ﷺ خطى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في الأرض أربعة خطوط that he drew in the sand four lines and he asked his companions, he says, do you know what this is? And they said, Allah and his messenger know best. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, أفضل نساء أهل الجنة خديجة بنت خويلد وفاطمة بنت محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وآسية بنت Muzahimin imra'atu Fir'aun wa Maryam ibnatu Imran. He said that there are four women, the most virtuous women of paradise. And those were the four lines that he drew. And he began with Khadija, the daughter of Khawaitid, Fatima, his own daughter. He mentioned Asiya, the daughter of Muzahim, who was the wife of the Fir'aun, and Maryam ibnatu Imran. This was the mother of Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam. She was considered by the Prophet ﷺ, mentioned first from all those women. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, He mentioned those women in the Quran, Asiya and Maryam by name, that she was the most virtuous of the women in paradise. That was what Khadija meant to the Prophet ﷺ, and so much more. You know, it's a blessing to have a righteous spouse. It's a blessing, a true blessing from Allah. It's a gift, in fact. Like all of the blessings of Allah, it's a true gift that you have a righteous spouse. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, 
الدنيا متاع وخير متاع الدنيا المرأة الصالحة. That world, the world is enjoyment. This world is enjoyment. And the best joy that one can have is a righteous woman. Of course, this context of, in the context of a man. The best joy that they can have in this world is a righteous woman. Not any woman. Not just any old woman. The same thing goes for men. It's not just any man. It's going to bring you a great deal of joy and happiness in this life, but a righteous one. The Prophet ﷺ found more than just joy in his wife Khadija radiallahu anha. He found support, he found care, and he found unwavering respect. Khadija stood by his side from the very beginning. She stood by his side as a wise counselor and a devoted partner. And while her finer qualities, because she was a fine woman, while her finer qualities endeared her to the Prophet ﷺ, they endeared her to him in a very profound way. That's what distinguished her among his other wives. It's the type of woman that she was, the caliber of woman. You know, there's something to be said about why you love other people. You love other people for who they are. And who they are is what they do and what they stand for and what they're all about. So the Prophet ﷺ loved Khadija because of who she was, what she did, what she stood for. But it was Allah's love for Khadija that opened his heart to her in a manner that it would never close. And this is something that we cannot discount when it comes to our own marriages. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that opens the hearts one to the other. The Prophet والسلام, he said, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan da'a Jibreela. That when Allah loves a servant, he calls Jibreel and he says, Inni uhibbu fulanan fa'ahibbah. He says, I love this person, so you are to love them. And then he says, فَيُحِبُّهُ Jibril," And then Jibreel falls in love with them. ثُمَّ يُنَادِي فِي السَّمَاءِ فَيَقُولُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ فُلَانًا فَأَحِبُّهُ فَيُحِبُّهُ أَهْلُ السَّمَاءِ ثُمَّ قَالَ ثُمَّ يُضَعُ لَهُ الْقَبُولُ فِي الْأَرْضِ And then it's called out in the heavens that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves so and so. And so every one in the heavens should love them. And so the people of the heavens, the angels, they love that particular person. And then acceptance for them is delivered to the people on earth. Acceptance to be embraced, to be loved by the people on earth is something that is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the opposite is also true. The opposite is also very true. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, إِذَا أَبْغَضَ عَبْدًا دَعَ جَبْرِيلَ فَيَقُولُ إِنِّي أُبْغِضُ فُلَان فُلَانًا فَأَبْغِضْهُ The Prophet ﷺ, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same thing, will, if he dislikes, if he abhors, despises a servant, he will call Jibreel and he will say, I despise and I abhor this servant, this person. And so therefore, you are to abhor and despise them. And so Jibreel will dislike them. He will hate them. And the same thing will happen. He will call to the dwellers of the heavens, the angels, and he will say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despises so and so and will command them to do the same. And so they will. And then, abhorrence is established for them on earth. After it is established in the heavens among the malaika, those same feelings will be found for that person here on earth. Either love or hate. To be embraced or to be rejected ultimately is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The opportunity that he has given us. So the question is, 
What do you think that means for you sitting here today? أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب أستغفره إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإسان إلى يوم الدين My dear brothers and sisters when we look at this relationship when we look at this particular hadith this is where true love is founded true love is founded in a shared belief in Allah and a profound sense of duty to him. This is where you can find that divinely inspired love. That love that you find in the life of the Prophet ﷺ with his wife Khadija radiallahu anha. And for the men, the Prophet ﷺ, he encouraged finding that type of love. The love which is based on a shared belief in Allah and a profound sense of duty to him. So the Prophet ﷺ, he says, That a woman should be married for four things, or is married for four things. The first of those, he says, لِمَالِهَا وَلِحَسَبِهَا وَجَمَالِهَا وَلِدِينِهَا The four things. The woman is married for her wealth, for her status, her social status. She's often attached to her, her family's lineage, for her beauty, or for her faith. The Prophet ﷺ says, فَضْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ يَدَكْ He says, you should, you should go for the one who is of faith, the religious, pious woman, otherwise you will lose out. You will lose out. And for the women, the Prophet ﷺ, addressing the guardians, of course, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَأَنْكِحُوهُ he says that if, if somebody comes to you and you're happy, you're pleased with their faith, their level of religiosity and their manners, their etiquette, their character, then marry them off. Meaning marry them to the women in your family. Otherwise, if you don't do so, there will be terrible fitna, turmoil. Trouble, corruption in the lands. They said, Qalu ya Rasulullah wa in kana fi. Basically, they said, but what if there's something there? You know, something else that we're worried about or thinking of? You understand? It's not ready, job, it's not quite money, status skin color, whatever. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَأَنْكِحُوا He repeated himself. If they come to you, you're happy with their level of faith, their religion, you're happy with their character, then marry them. Get them married. He said that three times. Emphasizing as he did for the men, what to look for in a woman, and now for the guardians of women, what to be looking for in a man. You know, most modern-day marriage therapists, counselors, etc., they're not going to stress this point. They're not going to stress this point. They're not going to emphasize this. They're not going to emphasize the importance of faith or belief in God but they won't emphasize the point that love is an action of the heart. And our hearts are controlled by Allah. He, he turns the hearts. He's the disposer of the affairs. He gives and he takes. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of our hearts. It's he that blesses us with the feelings of love and affection that many of us run after. We're chasing, we desire, we need to have those feelings of love and affection in our lives from our spouse. So it's, it's almost like a formula to success. The formula is that your search for love begins with your love of Allah. Your search for love 
from others begins with you first loving Allah and having a profound sense of duty to Him. And if you're able to do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you to witness His love. He will bless you to witness His love in the way that it's made manifest in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِ إِنْ خَلَقَ اللَّكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Many of you should remember this verse from your marriages. When you, when you got married, from your weddings, I should say. The Imam probably recited from his signs is that Allah has created for you from yourselves spouses so that you may find tranquility. Tranquility in them. The idea of marriage is to find tranquility, not its opposite in your marriage. If that's what you find in your marriage is the opposite of tranquility, you're finding turmoil and trouble, we need to go to the divine toolbox to fix the problems. You know, the righteous of the past, they used to say that when I find trouble in my marriage, the first thing they start to do is blame themselves. When I find trouble... They would say, if with my spouse or with my camel or your car, your automobile, I start to look at myself. What sin have I committed that I am experiencing this difficulty? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in the verse. He says, بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And he places between you affection and mercy. Indeed, in that are signs for people who give thought. So there you see it. Where does the love come? Where does the mercy, where does the affection come? It comes from Allah. It's a gift. It's a blessing. It's a true blessing to share and enjoy such feelings of affection and mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He allows us to experience some of that while we are here on this earth. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a gift, like any other blessing, we have to work hard to preserve that. We have to work hard to preserve our blessings. Ever turning to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in obedience and repentance, to hold on to them, those gifts. Or to, rec to reclaim what has possibly been lost in our relationships. So we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to that which He loves and is pleased with that he open our hearts to him, that he guide us to having a profound sense of duty and religiosity in our faith. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala join and unite the hearts of the faithful, in particular the spouses, the husbands and wives, strengthening the bonds of marriage and thus strengthening community. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant health to those that are ailing and sick, to give strength to those that are weak and to free those of us that are shackled with the bonds of debt. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa akhru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.